I was trying to explain to people that it wasn't that God was sending me to hell. He was giving me a message to give to other people not to come to that place. Okay, well, I'm an ordinary person who was touched by an extraordinary guy, a fatherless young man that was hurt because of it, and because of it, God became that to me, a father. I found out that um, God will be to you who you need him to be. And um, most people identify with God based off of their hurt. So if they didn't have any brothers and sisters, they identify with the Jesus part. If they uh, maybe dealt with witchcraft, they, they identify with the spirit part. The people who were fatherless, they do and connect to the father part of us. I will say I'm an individual that's been fathered by God. I love him for real, I live for him for real. Um, I'm not one of these people who say they love him but do something different. I'm a father, I'm a husband, child of God, enlightened by Jesus. Well, in 1993, um, I'll never forget it, I was laying in my bed and a miracle happened. A Bible appeared over my head. Most people won't believe that, but it's, it's up to the person to be able to receive that in their heart or not. But a Bible appeared over my head and the Bible had no chapter numbers, no verses, but it just had the words. And I clearly remember the words. It said, he called together his 12 apostles and he gave them power over unclean spirits and to preach the gospel. And I knew that he was communicating to me that that's uh, uh, something that had something to do with my future, but I couldn't fully understand it. Well, later on, I found out that in the original text, there's actually no chapter numbers or verses. Uh, they were added later for reference. So the Lord was showing me exactly who I am and what I was called to do. And that was a miracle that happened to me to uh, help me to understand that I'm called. It's an emotional situation. Um, the job that I do is a job that's, it's, it's, it's a thankless job, it's a tough job, and you experience a lot of people hurt. February of 2016, it had come to climax. It came to a tough point where I, all that built up on me and I had experienced some hurt from people that I really trusted, that I really loved. Um, and so that night, I remember sitting up in my bed and thinking that I'm experiencing a heart attack because of the pressure of all the people. Um, and usually when things like that happen to me, I just start worshiping. So I started worshiping, because usually worshiping always heals my worries. So I worshiped and I worshiped and it wouldn't stop. Tightness in my chest, arms feeling funny, and I'm thinking that I am about to die. So I started praying and prayer didn't work. Um, the next thing you know, I collapsed in my bed and uh, my spirit came out of my body. And I remember it just like it was yesterday. My spirit comes out of my body, my body's laying on the bed, and I thought that I had died. Wow. And I was expecting for my spirit to kind of transcend upward, but it didn't. Uh, it started going down, and it went down into the center of the earth. And I didn't say this when I first released the videos, but while I was going down, I could, feel, I could feel this intense heat. I could feel hopelessness. I could feel uh, despair. And um, not believing that this is my future because I was thinking that it was, you know, because of me. The feelings were like, Wait, did God abandon me? How, how is this happening to me? So I get down expecting to see a lot of fire and I didn't see any fire. It was like lava type of glow around but I landed on a rock and I looked up and I was in hell. And in that place, things are not said, they're known, you just know. So I looked over to my left and um, I saw a man that appeared to have had been burned from the top of his head to the bottom of his, his feet and his eyes were bulging out. And to make it even worse, he was on all fours like a dog human slave dog in hell. 
And what was worse than that is that it was a chain around his neck. And what was even worse than that, that uh, there was a, a being who was holding the chain. And I knew, as I said, you know, things are not said, they're known. I knew that that was a demon. And that demon had been assigned to that man's life while he was on the earth. And that demon um, knew that if I can control him long enough, if I can keep him bound long enough, if I can keep him bound with unforgiveness, if I can keep him bound with sin long enough, that I'll have power over him in the afterlife. So I'm experiencing these things. And uh, it's all, it's, every time I talk about it, it's real to me, just like it happened. I feel it right now, like I had just came out of it. I remember looking to my right and I saw a space, uh, an area where it was music playing. And on earth, music is played to help you get over a breakup or to help you feel better about being in love or you know, to get you going. Uh, there, music is to torment you. The music in that place torments a person about the fact that they didn't worship God when they had an opportunity to. And there, demonic spirits are the ones who are singing the lyrics as opposed to humans. And I was also made aware that a lot of the songs that are in the earth were motivated from that place. So a lot of times musicians, they will, they will smoke weed, they will drink, they will uh, take opioids or take heroin to get high. And they think that they're receiving lyrics from their spirit, but they're really receiving lyrics from demons in hell. And the lyrics are for the purpose of causing people to suffer in that place. So I always tell people, be careful about the music that you listen to because it could be motivated from hell. I remember, you know, thinking that this is my eternal destiny. I can't believe that this is my destination. This is where I'm, where I'm gonna be. Um, and then in that moment, Jesus lifts me up out of that place, takes me back up through the tunnel, takes me back up through my room and takes me up over the earth. And I'm able to see specific things in the earth uh, that are going to take place and that have take, taken place and I can't speak on those things. But then he took me back in my room and uh, the greatest experience, you know, I was thinking about this, this is the greatest experience that I've ever experienced in my life. I saw Jesus. And Jesus, he rebuked me. But in that rebuke, was the most love that I had ever experienced in my life. And what he said to me, he said, you had been hoping, he said, you have been secretly hoping that I hurt the people that hurt you. He said, these are not your people, these are my people. He says, from this point on, I only want you to focus on the assignment that I've given you because I'm gonna do something through you that the world hasn't seen. Uh, and he said many more things to me, but the gravity and the weight of what he said, I couldn't even ascertain all of it. It was, it was so powerful to see him, to experience him. And what he was letting me know is that um, not that I was a bad person or I, or I did something bad. He used that opportunity to show me what life is like for people who don't forgive. Hell is a place of hopelessness for people who can't forgive. Because a person that can't forgive is a person that's forgotten how much they've been forgiven of. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping that the other person gets sick. Unforgiveness is the root cause to many diseases and sicknesses. It's like Psychologically, people know this, that if you don't forgive, something will come upon your body. It makes you age faster. It takes away from you. It's like living life in a rear view mirror. Absolutely not. Not in my wildest dreams. I never thought that. So I shared it for, in hopes that somebody somewhere may see it and forgive somebody. Um, ironically, at that particular time, an individual was going to be performing at the Super Bowl. So uh, different news media outlets took that as an opportunity to connect the two stories for them to get some kind of ratings or viewings. And in that, they told the story the wrong way. They said that I was a priest. I'm not a priest. I never was a priest. I never uh, intend to be a natural priest. And, and the Bible says that we're kings and priests. But it says a priest from Michigan spoke about a certain artist. And I didn't. I just used a reference. So because of that, um, 
my story was taken out of context by many, many uh, news outlets and, and people follow uh, folly, you know, follow hype and they follow folly. So people love to hear uh, juicy information and they just believe the lie. Um, so that's the greatest mis misconception that I say that a particular artist uh, was was singing music in hell and that I was a priest. And others said that, you know, well, how could he be? How, why, why did he go to hell if he was a, a priest? You know, and, and it was I was trying to explain to people that it wasn't that God was sending me to hell. He was giving me a message to give to other people not to come to that place. One of the things that happened through it that I think was a misconception is the way that the Christian church saw it. Um, a lot of people hold to the doctrine that once saved, always saved, meaning that once you give your life to Jesus, you can never go to hell. Um, but I believe that's an erroneous doctrine and I, I can prove it through passages, you know. Uh, in the Bible, it does say in Ephesians chapter two, right around verse six through eight, it talks about the fact that we are saved by grace through faith. It is a gift of God, and it basically says that uh, it's not from works. We, don't, we can't be saved by works, and that's absolutely true. The problem is, and the misconception is, that people equate works to good morals. So, of course, you can't sell enough uh, church pies. You can't give enough money to be saved. You can't do anything to get saved. But to stay saved, you have to live a moral life. And when you mess up, you have to repent. Like for instance, the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 11, right around the 25th verse, it says that when you start praying, it says, forgive other people. He says, because if you don't forgive other people, your heavenly father won't forgive you. So either Jesus was lying or he wasn't. He said, if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. Also too, a passage that most people never look at is in the book of Hebrews chapter six, around the second verse. It says that, uh, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and who have, who have tasted of the heavenly gift and have tasted of the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, that word fall away means apostate. In other words, they have to totally abandon God. It says, if they shall fall away, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. And then you have the most one of the most famous scriptures that deal with the fact that uh, every sin shall be forgiven except for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So you can't say once saved, always saved, and then add those other scriptures in as well and make it make sense. What makes sense is that uh, Jesus saved you by grace. And if you're giving your heart to him, you're saved. Now walk out your salvation with fear and trembling, making sure that if you mess up, then you repent. And absolutely making sure by all means necessary that you forgive other people. I don't regret it at all. Um, I went through a lot because of it. It's very, very uncomfortable and it's very challenging to have millions of people discussing your name, especially in a negative light and in a positive light. Um, but what came out of it is far greater than uh, what I had to go through to get it out. Many souls came to Jesus. People who were entertainers came to Jesus. People who were uh, in the nightclubs and who were, who were dancers and who were depressed. People who were witches, people who were in sorcery. They came to Jesus because of that video. And, and, and the, one of the greatest things that happened is that there was a young man who was dying, who was an atheist. And his mother was a believer. His mother wrote me and told me that she played the video He played the video for him on his deathbed. And because of that video, before he died, he confessed and gave his life to Jesus. So if not for anybody, for him, one soul being saved and escaping that place of torment. Many news media outlets called me for interviews, many churches, many people wanting to know, is this really real? And, you know, my following went up because of it. And now there's many places that I go into in different cities that people know me because of it. So um, I think, you know, more good than bad came out of it. Um, it thickened my skin. It taught me um, not to ever want to be famous. 
being famous is foolish. Because the moment that you become famous for yourself, you become a target for people. Um, but it also taught me that whenever you, um, whenever you make history, you're going to take a hit. And there is no leadership without adversity. And there is no one who led well who didn't have to bleed as well. I absolutely would. Because truth is truth, you know? Now, if I made up something, if I told some lie, then I would never want it to get out. I wouldn't want it to go anywhere, but I will never be ashamed of anything that Jesus wants me to share. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter one, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and to the Gentiles. I need people to know that God is real. Secondly, I need people to know that you have to forgive. Thirdly, I would like for people to know that God can use ordinary people to bring an extraordinary message. And if I had not suffered and gone through some things, I would never have a message. I want for people to know that a lot of times your voice is in your suffering. Jesus appeared to me because of what I went through. And in the Bible, it says we learn obedience through the things that we suffer. So a lot of what you're going through, a lot of what people are going through is not really for them. It's for the message that's coming out of them. All right. Is it?